Hello everyone. Today I'm going to teach you macros in Vim. And when last we left off and I put my first journal entry on my website, MikeLevinSEO.com, I had just sort of pasted the text in and trusted the markdown language to do all the formatting. And as you can see here, some of the items that should have been formatted in list didn't come through that way. So we're going to fix that. Here we are in my custom CSS that's uh, overriding skeleton CSS framework. And I'll show you why in a moment. But the work we want to do is in journal.html. And the items that should look like a list begin here at 1997. Now, Everything you do in Vim is recorded and able to be played back with a period. So if I do I for insert mode, shift eight, space, escape, zero for beginning of line and down arrow, I can hit the period. But as you'll see, the cursor does not really end up where I want it to. I have to back arrow down, period, back arrow down, here. Now that's good, but there are real macros here. And uh, the way you do it is you hit Q to begin recording the macro or to tell it you're about ready to assign a key. So the way I think of it is that Q is to qualify your macro. So we do Q and then A, any key from A through Z where you want to put your macro, you can have you know, uh, all those macros going at once. Now I do the same set of keystrokes, shift eight, whoops, shift eight brought me back. Well, that shows you that you need to be very aware of what mode you're in. I was thinking of myself as insert mode, I wasn't. So I hit Q to stop recording the macro. Um, N, because the last thing I searched on was 1997, so that was a next search. Let's try that, that again. Q, A, we're recording the macro. I for insert mode, shift eight, space, escape key zero, down arrow, Q to stop recording macro. Now, remember the at symbol because we're gonna play back the macro that's at A, and we can repeat that, at A. Now, the great thing here is you don't even have to go back to the A key. The, as with many things in Vim, the double character does the most common thing you want to do, like DD for delete line. Well, at at replays the last macro you played. So the way you can think of it is you just do at at, at at, and you're just like a giant robot walking your way through your text file. Well, anyway, that is macros. I am going to escape colon write, and we'll see what that did. Okay, so the skeleton framework is quite minimal, and one of the things it appears to have done is stripped out the default formatting of LIs for whatever reason. Maybe it figures you ought to deliberately format your, your LIs. So uh, it did part of the job. It actually put each item on its own line, but we need to do the rest of the job by fixing our CSS for what looks like a normal bulleted list. So GT to go to our other tab. Now, as you'll remember from before, that same trick of buffers A through Z can be used for copy buffers as well as macros. And I happen to have put the CSS that I want here into my S copy buffer. So we do double quote, S for the buffer we're about to do, and now P paste, but it paste below where your cursor is. You remember how O, Lowercase o will insert a line below, uppercase o will insert a line above. Well, shift p will paste your content from your buffer above where your cursor line is. So we escape, colon, w for right, go back over here, do a refresh, and much better. There you have it, macros and a whole bunch of other little uh, bonus tips thrown in. Uh, please share the video. Um, I'm building quite a Vim following here on YouTube, 
And uh, I'm going to keep driving forward on this. So, um, you know, the more you can do to share these videos, the more I'll be encouraged to move on to the next Vim trick that will permanently and forever improve your workflow going forward. Thanks for joining me today, and don't forget to subscribe.